Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to your next little lecture. I thought I'd make a quick video on longitudinal measurement invariance since M plus introduced an awesome new feature um, that you can specify measurement invariance with the scalar metric and configural command, and you don't have to do it manually anymore, and it's tedious to do it manually. So I thought I'll take you uh, through the whole process quickly and show you how the new um, command works and look at the output. Um, if you want a more theoretical explanation of what measurement invariance and things is, I've already made a video about it in uh, a previous uh, YouTube video. So you can just go back to that. The same information applies. Um, in this video, we are um, just going to be looking at the actual analysis in N plus and seeing if our models actually are invariant over time. So as of um, N plus version 8.8, .8, Nothing really has changed in terms of how the syntax is written. Our title is still there. We still specify where our data is. We still name our variables the same way as we would. These are the variable names in my data set. We still specify our missing values. The variables that we're going to use in this example is task performance. So we did a study where we looked at a whole bunch of well-being factors of students over time. Uh, at two time points, and we're going to be looking at task performance in this case. So the the efficiency and the effectiveness of people, of students completing uh, their tasks in an effective manner at time one and time two. So at time one, it's measured up four items, and time two, they're exactly the same items. In our analysis command, everything pretty much stays the same. The only thing I could be adding extra now is the normal command we would do if we did measurement invariance between groups at a single time point. So it's model equals configural metric and scalar invariance. So M plus will then automatically generate this for you. The only thing that's new that you should know is in the model command where uh, we would have to specify the, the, the full model, the full metric scalar and um, configural model for each factor over time. Now we have to just state the normal factorial model that we are going to test. So in this case, um, the new terminology is we say we want to test for model one. So at time one, so model T1 is the terminology that we use in the new uh, syntax format, is task performance at time one is measured by items three, four, five, and six. And at model two, so at time two, model T2, task performance time two is made up by item three, four, five, and six measured at that time point. So it's really just important to note that this was, is the only thing that's new in the um, in our syntax. We specify the measurement model at time one, model T1, and the measurement model at time two. Nothing else different. We just save and we run. Okay, so the output would be exactly the same. There is a warning saying there's one missing case. M plus uh, removes this in my case uh, automatically. Let me scroll down to the model fit information. And here you will see something that looks very familiar. We have our normal invariance testing outputs, where we look at the chi-squared for each model specifically, as well as comparatively, if there's a statistically significant difference between the different models. So if we look at the metric model, we can see that chi-squared is significant. That is not what we want. But we could make an argument. Um, there's a bunch of new stuff in the literature that talks about like how chi-squared is not really a good indicator of a model fit. And it penalizes you for a whole bunch of stuff. But for the purpose of this uh, example, we can see that the model does not unfortunately fit very well for the configural, the metric, and the scalar model. Okay, so that's our first indication that the invariance might not be present. Um, the thing that we are really interested in is comparatively um, looking at the chi-square difference between our different models, and we want this to be non-significant because we want no statistically significant difference between these different models. Here we want it to be uh, a p-value bigger than 0 0.5, here we want it smaller than uh, 0 0.5. So here we can kind of like see that um, if we take the metric and the scalar model, so we take the uh, the metric and the configural model, if we take the configural model and we minus the metric model's chi-square, we get a difference of 27 to chi square and the degrees of freedom 22 minus 19 gives us 3 and we can see there is no statistically significant difference between these two models 
If we look at the scalar versus configural, if we use the 0.05 indicator, which is very lenient, uh, we can say that there is, uh, there is no statistically significant difference between it. But seeing that this is a measure that is already very well established and very well used in the literature, uh, we can use very strict criteria here. So we will use the 0.01, the 99% uh, probability value here as an indicator. So at the 99% probability value, there is no difference. But here, there is a difference. And there's also a difference between our scalar and our metric model in that case, right? So here we can already get a very clear indicator that there is, um, there might not be evidence for full measurement invariance in our model. But remember, chi-square is only one criteria that we have to look at. We have to look at a whole bunch of different factors as well. So if we scroll down, we look at our model fit information for the configural, it will give it for the metric model and for the scalar model. And we utilize the same criteria that we would always do. Right, chi-square is unfortunately um, significant, so there already a criteria is not met. RMCA is bigger than 0 0.08 and it is significant. We want this also to be non-significant, right? So two criteria is not met. Our CLI and TFI, uh, CFI and TLI is bigger than 0 0.93, which is okay, and our SRMR is smaller than 0 0.8. So a lot of criteria here is not meeting on the configural end. We can look for the same at the metric model. Um, again, of course, it, our MCI is getting a little bit smaller, but it's still non-significant, still not good. This criteria still meets, uh, this criteria still meets. And the same for the metric, uh, for the scalar model. Still non-significant, uh, still significant, still significant, still bigger than 0 0.8. Um, this still meets the criteria and this still meets the criteria, right? So we, take this information and we kind of have to compare all of the models on it and i'll show you that um, at the end maybe i'll just i'll do it now so i already went and um populated a table for you so you can kind of like see what uh, the differences are so this is just the information taken directly from the model statements oh sorry there and we kind of have to compare these based on um, Shin's criteria. So we have to make sure that there's no statistically significant difference between these different models. And we know, at least from the chi-square perspective, that is unfortunately the case. There is differences uh, between them. So that criteria is um, not met. But we should also look at other criteria, right? So RMCA should be, um, there should be no difference smaller than, or there should be differences smaller than 0 0.015. Um, there should be differences small on SRMR, uh, no bigger than 0 0.2, and then the same for TLI and CFR. Okay, so if we look at the criteria here, we know that the chi-square criteria doesn't meet. At least the CFI criteria meets, so that one is in check. Unfortunately, the TLI criteria doesn't meet because it's bigger than 0 0.01. And the same with RMCR. So there is, it's a lot bigger than um, our cutoff point, and the same with SRMR. So, does it meet the criteria for invariance? Unfortunately, not. So we can say so we can't do uh, mean comparisons between task performance at time one and um, time two. So that's just to give you like the indication of uh, how this kind of like works. You can of course go and inspect the the the, the model results themselves. Uh, for each specific model if you're interested in that. But overall, I think for most researchers, we are just wanting to have evidence that we can actually do comparisons between um, our population group at time one and time two. And measurement invariance is um, a criteria for that. So I really hope that this video is informative. Let me know if you've got any questions, and then I will see you in the next one.